Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar on what's new in MFT. Whether you're already familiar with Go Anywhere or just want to learn more about managed file transfer in general, we're happy you've joined us and hope the presentation is valuable to you. Before we get started, I'll just share a few quick housekeeping items. The event is scheduled for an hour and we are recording. So if you do need to leave or drop off at any point, you will get a copy of that recording afterwards via email so you can go back and review anything that you missed or share with others. And then throughout the presentation, if you have questions, you can utilize your questions option in the control panel. Feel free to submit questions and our team will do our best to answer. We'll also try to carve out some time at the end to take some of your questions live. Uh, finally, a survey will display at the close of the presentation. We do value your feedback. So please share any feedback you have, any additional questions, and we'll be sure to follow up with you. All right, with that, we will take a quick look at our agenda. Pretty straightforward today. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with help systems, we'll do a quick overview for you. Um, we'll also introduce our Go Anywhere MFT solution and make sure that you know kind of the basics of what we can do. And then we'll go through some of what's new, um, particularly in our latest couple of product releases. Um, the bulk of the presentation today will be a live demo, so we know that's what, what people tend to enjoy the most. So we'll show you up close and personal what Go Anywhere can do. And then, like I said, we'll take some questions at the end. So let me introduce you to our presenter. Um, Heath Kaff is our Senior Solutions Consultant at Help Systems working on our Go Anywhere Managed File Transfer product line, and he provides uh, pre-sales support specializing in demos and proof of concepts, so he knows what he's talking about. With that, I will let Heath take the reins. Heath, um, you've got this. You go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for joining in there today. Um, like you said, we're going to go through and just talk about initially here about help systems, uh, just in case it's the first time you sit in and joining us, and thank you again as well. So I just have a few slides to cover this, a quick little background on the company before I jump into going anywhere. Well, first of all, help systems started back in 1982, you know, so over 35 years ago, and our focus is really delivering uh, the best cybersecurity, some automation solutions, and also some operations management solutions to all organizations, all sizes. You know, our goal is to help our customers with their needs. You know, the one stop, one company that can provide those tools that they need, that you need, to assist you. You know, to assist you across all the different uh, platforms and different uh, areas. Uh, we now have over 900 employees in over 25 offices worldwide. My joke lately is now it's actually over 900 offices over you know, worldwide just because we're all working remotely. But the uh, majority of the Go Anywhere team is located in Ashland, Nebraska, just south of Omaha. You know, we're with our headquarters located in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, the Minneapolis area where I'm located at. Our Go Anywhere research and development team, you know, they're very active. We actually push out three to four major releases a year. And of course, that's kind of leads us into our discussion here today with the latest updates. But, and also just to let you know that a lot of those primary updates, there's also some smaller updates in between as well. So we're getting very active. We also believe in providing our customers with the best customer service. You know, we offer support via email, phone, and online chat. We do offer support around the clock, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year if needed. And, as a testament of our excellent support team, plus along with our solutions and the service that we provide, we have almost a 99% retention rate with our current customers. And the last bullet point here, we're also a member of the PCI Security uh, Standard Council, which really helps us to keep up to date with the latest security uh, requirements and uh, helps us ensure that you know, our products stay compliant. This is just a quick list of, uh, you know, with many strategic partners that we work with, like IBM, Microsoft, SAP, uh, VMware. Our partnerships really provide us with that technical resources and the latest releases so that we can test with, you know, making sure that we do stay compliant with the latest changes and those requirements. This here is just a quick sample listing of some of our customers. You know, Help Systems has over 18,000 customers worldwide with going with over 3,000 customers and across the board from different industries, you know, like financial, insurance, healthcare, education, and so many more. We have going or installed from small IT shops, mid-range to large IT shops like Fortune 500 companies. So it's really scalable to fit your needs. 
one thing nice here too, when we talk about these different solutions, there are some different customers. You know, if you like some references, you know, that you can work with, possibly getting some references close to your geographical location or within your industry, we can usually line up with someone. Our goal with Goiner MFT Managed File Transfer is to help you automate and secure file transfers. You know, today you may be using some older outdated technology to manually move and share files with others. You know, maybe you or other colleagues are manually creating programs and scripts just to move some files around. Maybe using basic FTP or basic email to push those files. These processes can be very costly from time to in consuming, in time consuming wise, to possible attacks, you know, those security breaches. A true managed file transfer solution will offer a solution that is a centralized solution, a solution that will help you save time and money, improve security, and mainly you know, simplify those file transfers from server to server, person to person, really anything in between. And those workflows, you got your files coming in, you know, you want to automate everything you can. Automatically pick up those files, maybe go through and rename them, encrypt them, you know, make sure you got the right security built around them and then send them out, maybe through uh, using secure FTP or some secure mail feature, but either way, it's all being tracked and audited as well. Go Anywhere uh, Manage File Transfers is a solution that will help you transfer your file securely through batch jobs and ad hoc requests and more. Go Anywhere is uh, pretty much almost agnostic. You can deploy Go Anywhere MFT solutions on-prem in the cloud, on platforms like Microsoft Azure and AWS, or within hybrid environments. Our secure managed file transfer solution runs easily on platforms you know, like uh, Linux and Windows, AIX, uh, IBMI, and more. So let's say today you install it on Windows, later on you want to move it to a Linux server, it's no problem at all. It's pretty straightforward, we'll help you out with that as well. We have some great tips along that. But we also now offer Go Anywhere MFT as a service where help systems will manage the software and hardware for you. And I'll have more information to come on that here just a little bit. With the built-in auditing, your file movements, both inbound and outbound, are being tracked and written to a log file, capturing information about the documents, the user, uh, the IP address. Plus, Go Anywhere is also tracking both the administrators and the end users, you know, what they're doing when they log into Go Anywhere. It is easy to use, a nice, easy to use graphical user interface that is web-based, it's pretty intuitive, it looks great. You get to use the browser of your choice, like IE, Firefox, Chrome, you know, supporting the ease of use by dragging and dropping type functions. Plus, at a click of a button, you can get outstanding detailed help, usually with several examples to assist you along the way. Go anywhere, first of all, can be set with a client, you know, where you're connecting to remote servers to push and pull documents, but also go anywhere can be configured as a listener, as a server for those inbound services along your trading partners and customers, maybe even remote employees to come in to pick up or drop off files. You have options to, uh, to encrypt or decrypt the documents utilizing a built-in KMS, the key management system. Our KMS allows you to manage PGP keys, your SSL certificates, and SSH keys. You can quickly import your trading partner's public keys and even create your own key pairs as needed. And you will be able to manage and lock down your administrator's capabilities by selecting a combination of 18 different roles, really defining their permissions and what they can see and do within Go Anywhere. Go Anywhere MFT has several built-in functions. And you know, with our short period of time today, I can only point out a few of them. But one of the key features is the ability to encrypt your data. You know, built in to Go Anywhere is a centralized key management system that KMS I mentioned just a little bit ago. Go Anywhere can help you manage all those different keys, allowing you to create new key pairs, import existing or your customers' public keys that you need to use to encrypt their data. So when those files come in, you got the file there, you can easily encrypt those files. Take that encrypted file and send it out as needed. Again, maybe through a secure email or through some type of FTP protocol, really simply and automatically. We also allow you to easily decrypt the, the, those files that come to you. You would have the private key. Those documents come in, we can automatically pick them up, take that file, decrypt the file, and then deliver that file as needed. Place it where it needs to go. 
there's also one one piece here I just want to throw in really quickly, but there's one additional option here too as well called encrypted folders. You know, users like your trading partners can drop off their documents using Go Anywhere, of which then those documents are automatically encrypted at rest with AES 256 bit encryption. And then Go Anywhere can automatically decrypt the documents as well as long as you're using Go Anywhere to pick them up. But either way, it's very, very seamless to the end users. Well, besides encrypting and moving the files like that so far, you know, within Goinier's workflow automation, you can also take advantage of the data translation functions where you can easily read and write those data the doc, to different document types, CSV, flat files, JSON, and other documents like XML and even EDI files, EDI X12 files. You will be able to read in data and easy write to an Excel spreadsheet. You can use your own Excel template that already has, you know, those customized worksheets laid out where you got those predefined titles, headers, colors, et cetera. Plus, you can control the fonts and data formatting. So and if the data should be appended to the existing data or simply just replace it, those are some of the options you have. And with this screenshot, the reading of an Excel spreadsheet, you can define the document and the sheet name that you want to read in, plus set the number, row number to start reading at, and how you want to format the data. You know, take that data, maybe modify it, and write it out to a database table or to another Excel spreadsheet or some other type of document. You know, the choice is yours. With our built-in ICAP integration, Go Anywhere can easily integrate with solutions like ClearSwift to quickly scan the document, uh, check into the document uh, for any viruses or scan for any PII or PCI information, and then take the appropriate actions to block or redact information as needed. Uh, as an example, so I'll give, give you some to picture here. You know, with a patient, when a patient downloads their medical records, the social security number itself is redacted or removed. If you take this one step further, we have no visibility into patients or health, you know, professional cyber security postures at all. So we are essentially helping them become more secure by not allowing this information to be present, presented on the other computing devices. Another example, you know, this can be also be applied to financial institutions with banking statements. We can redact all but the last four digits from their account number when these statements must be downloaded. I have a question for all of you, just to think about anyways. You know, do you need or do you have to, re are you required to try to meet certain industry, state privacy laws and regulations within your company? You know, ensuring your file transfers are 100% compliant is an important step in preventing data breaches, you know, heavy fines, uh, public distrust. Using our secure file transfer solution, go anywhere, managed file transfer, we can help you be more secure and be compliant. Go anywhere can help you comply with those regulations like HIPAA, SOX, PC, uh, PCI, and GDPR. And later this year, actually very, very soon here, we will be the very first MFT solution that is Common Criteria certified. Common Criteria is an international recognized set of guidelines, ISO, I think it's 15408, to meet regulated industries and government requirements. Common Criteria uh, defines a common framework for evaluating security features and capabilities of IT security products against those functional and assurance requirements. With Go Anywhere, this solution can help you manage and secure the exchange of private data in order to help you comply again with those regulations, right? With SOX and PCI and, and GDPR and things like that. It's an on-prem solution that is centralized has the ability to define your admins, one to 18 different roles and different permissions you can define. Even we allow you to create your own granular user permissions so you can actually have more than 18 roles if needed. A built-in KMS, built-in key management system to help you manage those keys. Easily encrypted data with PGP and so forth. Auditing is built right in. A detailed audit log tracking the file movement both inbound and outbound along with the administrators and users when they log in. Detailed audit reports, such as the uh, PCI security settings audit report. Use the secure protocol that you need to, like secure FTP and HTTPS. Several secure 
file transfer options are there, are built in, including FIPS 140-2 compliancy. So it can help you secure it that way. Plus, we can also do that security at rest, as I mentioned earlier. Integrity checks to verify your file transfers. And the last one here is the most secure email for sending documents securely that do not go through your Exchange server. You can define some additional security things around it. There's no size restriction unless you define, you know, define one and so forth. Oh, and if you need some additional information regarding the compliances out there, we have some really good information that you can read into on our website. Follow this link here down below. Now, you know, that you have that basic understanding of what GoAnywhere can do, you know, it's more than just a file transfer solution. You know, continue to deliver, you know, many new features and enhancements. And that kind of leads me where I'm at now, right? You know, GoAnywhere is pretty much OS agnostic. So you can install again wherever, what, whatever platform you like to as well. We have, uh, you know, the different uh, VM software installations. You got your Windows, Linux, IBMI. Um, we also offer some Docker images too to help out. And with our latest release of 6.5, we have new deployment offerings. We now have a SaaS solution. Go Anywhere MFT as a service. So Go Anywhere is hosted then by help systems. Our SaaS team deploys all the tools and manages the back end for you. So you still get the power and the control, the majority of the application features and the configurations, but we, again, we give you the insurance and the back end for you. So you get all that benefits of Go Anywhere minus the uncertainty of you know, managing the cloud infrastructure or installing software on-prem. A few other updates. We have updated the Go Anywhere Secure Forms. Updated uh, the secure, so the forms we have added some dynamic component blocks I'll show you. Uh, we can actually verify the web user information that's logged in and some additional things there as well. We've also updated the secure mail outlet plugin. We've added some, uh, the ease of use and sense of the, 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 CC, the, the, the copies and the blind copies, plus the uh, new integration look and feel within the uh, Microsoft Outlook too as well. And the last thing, going back to is that common criteria I just mentioned about a minute ago. Uh, we've added new features around that, the FIPS 140-2, compliancy and so forth. And uh, we'll be officially certified that here in just a little bit. And there's also some additional information, but all of our updates, enhancements, all that good stuff out there in our release notes that are also available for you. All right, so at this time, it's time to jump into a demo. So let me do this. All right, so you should be seeing, what you're seeing here right now is uh, you as an admin, you know, logged into GoAnywhere. Uh, so you, where you're going to be doing the configuration, the setup of GoAnywhere, the setup of users and so forth, always based on those permissions, those roles that you have, right? Well, going back to what I want to talk about with the new features of 6.5, the one was the, uh, the new SaaS offering, GoAnywhere as a service. That all comes back to the portal that you can get registered in. So you can get registered and get logged in. This is the key location where you can actually do the installation, you know, get our software, get our instructions, get all of our documents and so forth from here. So we've had this on-prem for quite a while. And just to show it to you really quickly, if you haven't seen it, MFT, select the flavor of the OS, you know, if it's a Windows, if it's a Linux, et cetera, just select it. At that point, the screen will refresh where you can get our documentation. We have all the PDFs. We have installation files right here as well and even the release notes. So some great information there for you. What I want to point out at this point of time is the new option, new offering, going as a service. It's just a few steps. Uh, you just got to walk through it, take that option there, select your region, give yourself a, a name for your environment that you want to install, and then a do domain name. Outside of that, you can configure the ports if you want to change the defaults, but then the next step really is just to click on the Create button. This process here will take roughly about 15 minutes. What we're going to do is create the hardware, the software environment for you, and when that is completed, we will email you the link to get logged in and then to configure some of the setups there for yourself. The on-prem, by the way, if you take the option to install on-prem, like your own Windows, it takes less than 10 minutes to get downloaded, installed, and up and running. So it's pretty quick. 
but that's all to it. So again, you'll get an email if you follow this process to get yourself logged in. Once you're logged in, that kind of brings me back to where we started here, because once you're logged in, you know, using the browser of your choice, you will be able to administer and use GoInward for your file transfers. Another area that we've made some changes is, is around the uh, uh, different uh, things you can do within a form and different things you can do on the, the Secure Outlook. What I want to do first though right now is just to introduce you to just the workflow. It's just in case this is your first time seeing a webinar with us, quick example of a reason why you want to help automate your file movements. I'm going to jump into one of our, our monitoring options. We do have a built-in scheduler, monitors and triggers, but I want to show you the monitoring right now where we can monitor a folder that is monitoring for looking for some a document or documents being dropped off. I do have one down below here. I'm going to go ahead and just Curse will activate it. Just make sure it's up and running. And let me just walk through it just to give you an idea. So here what we're doing, we're setting up a folder to be monitored. That folder could be local to you. It could be a network share. It could also be on a remote server, maybe one of your own or even a trading partner server monitoring through like Secure FTP. So it's pretty flexible. Uh, in this example, I'm just monitoring a local network. You can see the folder that I'm monitoring, this outbound folder. and these monitors are event driven. Think of like a snapshot. Since I started or since the last time I checked, have any files or documents been created or modified? Have any been just created, modified or deleted? Or do, do any documents exist? So you have different events that you're gonna be based off of. You can also use a wildcard type pattern search or if you prefer, even define a regular expression where you're looking for a certain file name, a certain document format, whatever it might be. In this example, I got anything that starts with whatever, but as long as it's webinar.pdf, you could just do an asterisk for any file or asterisk.pdf for any PDF file. The option is yours. So what we're doing, again, we're going to be monitoring this folder for some documents with this naming convention. And then on the scheduling, you're going to define how often you want to check. Uh, you can check 24 hours a day if you want to. I have it set up for six to six, scanning basically every minute. You do have options here. You can define it by the seconds. Maybe you want to do it every 30 seconds, but every minute, every 10 minutes, every 30 minutes, every hour, up to you. And then the days of the week to run. Monday, you know, Sunday through Saturday, or you want to do just Monday through Friday, pick the days there. If this folder that you're monitoring, you know there's only going to be one document there. This last option there is that once that document's there, once it's picked up, you must have stopped checking. So it just kind of gives you an option to stop it. Since we're monitoring a folder for a document or several documents, what you see in the screen right now is the ability, or excuse me, is what we're using is a variable, a file list variable that is called files. What we're doing, and we're watching this folder. It could be, it could have a single file, a dozen files, 50 files or more that meet your criteria, this supports a whole list of files. So we're gonna keep track of those files that meet your criteria, put them into a variable called files. Files will be passed to a workflow project, which we'll get into in just a little bit, where that project, this workflow, can take those files and then do something that you define with them. Maybe just move them, rename them, zip them, archive them, encrypt them, etc. That's what the project can do. On the advanced tab, we want to make sure that the files are not locked that we see out there. So you do have that capability. And then email notifications. We want you to be informed if there's an issue or not, depending on what you want to, how you want to set it up. Here, if that monitor fails, you're going after a folder. What if that folder got renamed or deleted? Or if you can't get to a remote server to check that folder over there? If that fails to get connected up, you want to be notified. So you can set that up. Projects, it says, project failures. These are some options here to also to be informed if they fail, but you can also do the same thing within those projects, within those workflows, or both. No files found. At the monitor level, we can set up a basic SLA that by the end of this time period you define, this was 6 p.m. If no files were ever there were picked up, you can be notified. Nice and simple there. So that's what we're doing there. So it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. And send it to that monitor. So what I'm doing here is, again, I'm monitoring a certain folder. That monitor is currently active. You would have a process, an internal process, maybe putting some documents there, 
or you have users dropping off documents there once they're ready to be picked up, let's say. I'm gonna show you this way, going through our file manager. Here's my folder that I'm monitoring. And I'm gonna put in a couple documents over there. You can see I got them highlighted already. Here's my two webinar type PDFs. I have, again, have a process or a user putting some documents in there. You can see that they're there. At this point of time, that monitor is checking every minute for those new or modified documents. And when they're there, it's gonna pick them up and move them for me, right? So that project that I was tied to earlier, that the monitor was tied to directly, is going to be executed. This is the project. And I'm gonna walk you through it really quickly. We have some, by the way, some system variables. We love variables within the, you know, your projects, your workflows. This is the project, the design, the, the attributes, the values of the parameters. But here's the actual layout, the step-by-step -step process that we're gonna do. And if you wanna add more tasks, more actions, we have a component library built in where you can easily select the options that you want it to do, like the zipping and unzipping, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, database, SQL functions, your data translations, the reading and writing and so forth. So we have over 150 different tasks in here that you can add into your workflow. For this one here really quickly, what we're doing, I'm creating a temporary workspace. This is a space that's going to cr be created that I can put files into. It's also there for as, as this job is running. The PGP encrypt task. This is one of the tasks that came from over, right over here under SFT, was, sorry, that's PGP encrypt. Sorry, I'm thinking differently there. PGP encrypt right down below. But these are the tasks brought in. And it just kind of lays it out for you. And by the way, there's some great built-in help right over here on the left-hand side here, right-hand side here though, that you can simply just click on it and it'll bring up information. It's intuitive, it knows where you're at. So here it talks about that PGP encrypt task. You got some really good detailed information and even better at sometimes, some really good examples to walk you through it. Right there at your fingertips. So we're gonna take some files and encrypt them. If you recall in that monitor, I created a variable called files. Here I'm using a variable called files. So I have the dollar sign curly brackets around it. That indicates I'm using a variable. I'm gonna encrypt those files with this key. This is my trading partners, my ABC customer's key, of which by the way, I would have earlier imported that key right into my KMS. So again, import your customer's public key, use that key, encrypt the data, and I am going to temporarily put them into my workspace here, this temporary workspace I created earlier. I am going to keep track of those files that I encrypted using variables. So I got my encrypted variables, encrypted files variable defined, and I also have my original files, the original files that are being tracked now that I have not encrypted, you know, there's the original ones that are picked up through the monitor. And the next step is to connect to my server. I'm using the secure FTP protocol, I got my resource, my customer right there. And by the way, you can define your resources ahead of time. So it makes it really easy to connect to that remote server. Put files. I'm going to grab those encrypted files using that variable that comes from right over here. All you have to do to get into the simplicity of it, let me just blow that away. Just drag and drop or double click. Either way, you get it in there pretty quickly. The destination. I'm connecting to that targeted server, right? When I click on those three dots to browse, what's really nice here, really easy to use, it connects me to that server. So I am on my remote trading partner server right now. And based on those permissions through that resource where I can navigate to select the folder that I can drop those documents off at. So I'm dropping them off right there. I am going to, in this project, delete the files. So I'm going back to my variable called original files and then clean up the workspace. We do recommend some error handling and this particular project is set up at a higher level where anything fails, call this module. You can define individually or unique error handling on every task if needed. But just so you know, you can abort, continue, you know, ignoring the errors, call a module, which I'm doing, or set a variable value. This error, if it gets you know, ran, it's going to email out the uh, information to one of my on-call reps using a variable that's uh, defined ahead of time or higher level up some information about it, plus we have an attachment, a system job log grab from the right-hand side. That's all to it. All right, so at this point here, and by the way, you could validate it, high-level compile it, make sure it looks good. 
at this time here, though, this project should have ran. You know, again, I'm monitoring that folder, right, for those documents. This project should have ran. And recall, I should be deleting the original file. So let's go take a quick look. Go back to my file manager. And those two documents are no longer there. They were picked up, they were encrypted, and they were deleted. The original ones were deleted. Easy way of looking at that is our audit logs. Completed jobs. And by the way, you can do some sorting or filtering, grab just information you need, but I can see mine right there on top. So right away, this particular project was kicked off through my monitor. So I know that's the right one as well. Click on the link, the hyperlink, to actually dive into the job log. You'll find some really good detailed information, exactly what's happening out there step by step. And let me just point out a few things. Two files were encrypted. So you can see the original files, they were encrypted with PGP. If I go down a little bit further, two files were uploaded to my remote server. So now you can see exactly where those are going. And then my next step was to delete the original files. So two objects were deleted. What were deleted? The original .pdf files. So all that nice detailed information is right there for you. All right, so that was a quick walkthrough of uh, one of our automation projects. Again, automation is key, I think. Let's jump into show you some new features around the secure forms. So we have the services secure forms, your form manager, where you can create these customized worksheets, you know, that users can fill out. And also some really good built-in help to help you out to, to define what they're about. So the idea here is to take some information from a user, take that information they plug in and pass that information directly to a project, to a workflow. That's one of the reasons why I started there, because that workflow can do so much. And so we can take that information they plug in there, maybe even you know take those files or records, excuse me, and write them to a database table, or take the attachments or documents and encrypt them, move them, et cetera. So you can do whatever you want within that project. To walk you through a form, we got some basic information here on the general tab. As I just stated in that little diagram, a, a form ties back or ties directly to a workflow project, something that needs to process it to handle the information. So we have my project listed there. And again, you can just click those three dots to browse to it. Access, you can define the different ways these this form can be accessed. It can be accessed through a, if you want to SOAP enable or not. If you want to enable through a public access, or just if you want to include it through um uh, a direct a web or SQL web client SQL or going to a web client page. Sorry about that. So you have it enabled there for the web client. So you can define or control how this form can be accessed and who can access it as well. If it is through the web client enabled, you can actually define the different web users that can use it, or even the groups. If you want to define a group of users that way, again control on who can use it. But more importantly, right now, let's focus on those features, the customization of how to set this form up. Left hand side are those components, different pieces that you can add into your form. You can see we already have some in there, but all it is, if you want to, like this current date, all that was is drag and drop that into the form. It'll you know drop it right in there for you. At this point, nothing's filled in, so it looks a little bit different. But once you start figuring, you know, filling in the information, it'll start you know formatting as needed. So here we have the current date. When you put in these different components, the, you know, the couple main things to point out, point out the variable. Here we have a variable name called date. This variable date will be passed to that project so you can take that value and do something with it. So that's the variable, kind of a key thing to keep track of. The label, of course, it's what's gonna show up there. Is it required or not, et cetera. This next section here is a brand new section talking about being able to retrieve the web user's information. When they log in there, we know who they are and, and things like that. So you can actually take advantage of that. So I have a couple of basic examples. On this one here, it's actually a drop down option right over here, where I got my variable name being defined as username, my label, required, yes. The source of information is a manual or through a database query. You can pick and choose which one you want. If it's manual, you're gonna fill in some information down below, define it. If it's database, you're gonna query a table in the back end. So I'm querying a table grab information about the users that's logged in. Same thing for the email address. I'm querying a table out there. 
I'm comparing against the user's name that's logged in to return that information. So it's the right information that's based on their user profile. This section also is new, this re repeatable component where you can repeat the same kind of a question on the same form, same connection when you're filling it out. You don't need to hit submit and redo it again over and over again, it's all in one spot. So let's say you are filling, you're entering a whole bunch of different users into a database as my example. I'm gonna ask them for the first and last name, the departments. These are different components. This is here is just a, a text field. Is it required or not, the length, et cetera. Same thing for the last name, just a text field. The department is a multi-check box option where I'm gonna list out the different options that they can select. I define the label and I define the value that's gonna be passed to your project through that variable name up on top. Querying a database for your records. And, you know, change it from here. There we go. Uh, maybe I was right there, sorry. Um, but here's the, the database query list. It's gonna list out different records from my table so I can select the right one at runtime for the end user that is. So it makes it easy for them. You know, maybe it's a customer number, you know, maybe it's something else, you know, like the, the region, et cetera. Email address, again, it's just a text field, fill it in. I have a little bit of a starting point there and additional email addresses. So this is actually a component list, a repeating component list within a repeating one if you want to. So maybe a user has more than one email address. And then I do allow for attachment. So you can actually include documents being sent back to that project when they hit that submit button. So this is that, that form there. Now as an end user logging in to use that form, they have their own web page. By the way, this page can be customized with their own image, your own image and logo and disclaimer, but they would log in. We see a few other additional features that I have enabled for this user. We got secure folders, Go Drive, and secure mail. Let me jump down to secure forms. And for this user, I do have a good handful of different forms that are available to me. Here's that new employee secure form. And here's that questionnaire form. And now I just fill it out. So we got today's date, the user information based on who I'm logged in with. You can see it right there, it's valid, it's good, as well as my email address, right? So you can see that's right there for you. The, um, the repeatable section. So I wanna add some users into a database, some new users that are coming on board. And I'm not too creative here, someone called John Doe. He's part of the support group. He belongs to the Northeast region. Full-time, yes, and his email address will be John, we'll say. And again, I can add more email addresses or let's say I wanna add more employees. Simply click on the plus sign, and now I can go to the next one. We'll pick on Jane Doe, again, not being too creative. Part of sales, also Northeast, full-time, and her email address. And then, of course, I can add uh, attachments and documents. You can require certain types of documents and how many they can upload, et cetera. But once you're done, they just simply hit that submit button and it allows them to connect up. Oh, let me just... Something might have just changed when I was doing it. Let me see if I can get it working really quickly. Sorry. Let's see if I can get out of it. Let me try it one more time. Let's see if I can do it quickly enough here. All right, 11. Oops, make sure I selected that. And let's get that truncated for some reason. I gotta check my files, but let's put in John again. So I think I did support last time, Northeast. John. Jane. And let's just try this again one more time. If it doesn't work, I do have a job I can show you, but it should be working. Let's hit submit. And I'm not sure what's going on there. Apologize for that live demo. Um, but let me show you. I did run just earlier today, so I made sure it worked. So it must have changed the back end. But if I jump to audit logs, 
this is what I wanted to show you. And again, I apologize for that. But here we have this information. And you can see there's something earlier that were kicked off through the secure form just not too long ago. When I jump into that job log, you can see information. And I, in fact, I was just trying to use the same user profile and everything. So here we got John coming in being added and also Jane. So it's kind of nice there. Um, some Another new feature, by the way, is on the project that's actually processing that. That project is right there. I have a task, my secure form response. If it's successful, I get a nice message back. Of course, ours was not there, but I would add a little response on the screen saying, hey, the information's been being processed, so it's great. But the redirect, nice and easily. I say a user fills out that form. What is it to do? What's the next step? You know, maybe it is just to display a web page. Maybe you want to redirect, oops, sorry, to a secure form, another secure form. So you have one form that fills out, then it brings up another form. So we make it make it really easy to help kind of just bring up multiple forms that way and you just find the form that they need to use. So that is kind of a nice new feature there as well. And at the end there, by the way, as you saw in the job log, typically you take the information, maybe read to a database table, you can verify it, you know, wor work with it, take the attachments, zip them, whatever you need to do. In my example, as you saw in that job log, the print there is I was just printing the information out just so you can see it. The next thing I want to talk about are some new features around the secure email plugin. Um, we made some changes. So I'll show you both here on the web client and also on the uh, the Outlook plugin. So if you have Outlook, you can take advantage of the secure mail as well. All right. So with this, you know, the idea of secure mail is to be able to email out your documents securely. Those documents don't go through your Exchange server. Simply put, we put out a link to the user and they can download it. So let's walk through the example. Again, this can be done through Outlook as well. So you send your customer, your recipient, you know, an email, get their address. Here's a couple of nice new features, the CC and BC right there. So I could do a blind copy to somebody else. Um, this one, just to show you, you don't see it. And the message, you know, you can add the message in there, test secure mail these are parameters the options security options you can lock down allow me as a user to change them if you want them to be able to the targeted recipient do they have to be registered or not so additional line of security you could say yes they have to be registered this email package how many days before it expires you want a red receipt the attachment simply send you'll have additional options set up. How many times can this recipient, this customer download it? So if I want to, I can set it just to one time, so it's a one-time deal. After that point, once they download it, it's no longer available. Allow them to reply. Password protect the package. How do you want to create the password? You know, just let it randomly created, specify the password, and how do you want to send it? Include it in the email or send it as an SMS text message. And once you're set and ready, just hit send. I'll show you the example here in just a little bit. So that message, you know, that secure document's been sent out. But here's another nice option, the request file. I mean, a lot of users don't re really, really know about this one here. It's a really nice option, that, kind of that one-off deal, right? You have a customer you're working with, they want to send you something securely, but they don't have the means to do it. You could send them a request file. This request file, again, you, you know, specify their email address. and they want to send you the document. Do they have to be registered or not? Expire, you know, expire the actual request, and then simply hit send. So now at this point, I have two emails coming to you know, that recipient to me. So let's go grab those. Bear with me. All right. Here's the first email. This is using our default template, so you can customize this page, but Pretty straightforward. I got the document right there. 
and I have the ability or the option to download it. You can see the, the file, the size, and even how many times I can download it. Earlier I specified just a one-time download, so once I download it, that count becomes zero. Pretty, pretty easy there. The file request. So if I have a customer who wants to send me a document or two or whatever it might be, I can send them this link, allowing them to upload the file directly to my server. And by the way, there's no size restriction unless you define one, so you can really control this. But let's grab those documents. We'll grab a couple different ones, in fact, this time. So I have two documents there. They can add a text or a message to it, but then they simply hit send files. And that'll go right directly up to your server. You will receive an email letting you know that those documents have arrived. So once they're there, you can turn around and go in there and access those documents. So if I go to my inbox, we now have the top one right there. I click on it, and you can see those two documents right there. So really easy to grab them, nice and secure. Now, as the uh, Outlook, I want to show you the Outlook plugin a little bit. So we have, first of all, there's a plugin. Once you have the add-in installed, top right corner, this, this is a new color. If you saw it in the previous demo, I think it was green. Um, but really easy. From here, you can do the request file. So I can request some files that way. It just walks you through it, same type of screen we saw earlier. If you're creating a new email, simply click on the option to send a new email, and you have some options up on top that allows you to you know, specify who it's going to, of course, but right here, options. If you are allowed to make some changes to how many days they can, you know, before it expires, how many times they can download it, attach that file. I do this on a daily basis where I'm attaching like two-hour recording sessions to customers to send them some recording or trains I do. So again, no size restriction unless you define it, but simply hit that, attach the file, and then when you're ready, whoops, I clicked on it, simply click on the send file, and then it'll send it out through your account. Again, everything is being tracked and audited and monitored and all that fun stuff. So if I jump back, audit logs, we got my completed jobs there. Those are doing your file movements. But then if you look at the different options on the left-hand side, HTTPS, the secure mail options, you'll see information about reading the package, the download, all that fun stuff is right there for you, all nice and detailed. And by the way, if you scroll down, you can easily export the information. Um, you can also write to a syslog server if that's something that you guys like to do, but also administration to see what your admins are doing and so forth. Uh, file audit. If uh, you work with a lot of files moving between users and businesses and all that, you can actually search for a certain file to make sure it did arrive or you know be, or been sent, et cetera. All right, let's just make sure I covered everything. Yeah, I think I got everything else. I'm going to jump back. Let's see if I can find my page there. All right. All right. So, again, that was a quick run through going over some of the new features in 6.5. Um, if uh, at this time here, if you haven't had a chance yet, you know, please go ahead and send those questions our way. We, we'd be glad to run through some of them. We do have some time right now. Um, if for some reason we don't have time, we run out of time for you, we can always reach out afterwards. But also, you can reach out to us at any time if you have questions or if you'd like to have a demo, a little more in depth, see a demo first and you know, right on right there in your own server, not a problem. Again, you can download it, install it in prem takes less than 10 minutes to get up and running, or take advantage of even a SaaS environment to evaluate the product. Either way, it's pretty simple for you to give it a try. You know, I think our default is like 30 days, no cost to you, plus you can get them assist some assistance along the way. So if you need some help, we'll be glad to work with you. All right. So Heath, now that we have a little bit of time for questions, uh, looking at the chat box just a reminder to everyone if you'd like to submit a question you can do that through the questions pane and we will try to read some aloud here so one question we commonly get heath is just around mm -hmm. training or services do we offer can you speak to the the training and the services we offer to kind of assist people to get up and running oh absolutely um yeah you know we have some really good experts on my team here that love to help you out uh from product trainings product uh, project counseling, integration, configuration, upgrades, and, and more. Um, but we offer trainings online. We have like 18 different types of trainings all laid out already for you, so you can pick what you need to even do some customized 
service times where we can work with you on a particular project, a workflow, some unique setup, whatever you need to do there, we'll be glad to help you out on, online or on site even, to be honest. Perfect. Another question, um, can Go Anywhere protect data at rest? And what does it take to encrypt files at rest? Oh, good question, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I briefly threw in there, you know, the ability to protect data at rest. And what it is, you can set up folders to be encrypted. So these encrypted folders that you set up, that you basically point to within Go Anywhere, as long as you're using Go Anywhere, any documents that are getting dropped off in those folders will automatically be protected at rest with AES 256-bit encryption. And it's very seamless. The, the wizard that walks you through it, by the way, just takes a few minutes. So it's really quick there. It's very simple to walk you right through it. Um, and then same thing for the decryption, by the way. As long as you're using Go Anywhere to grab that file, download it, move it, it will be decrypted automatically. So if a user tries to grab that file through the back door, some Window Explorer, let's say, and they grab that file and try to open up, it will be garbage. It'll be encrypted, so they can't read it. So it's, it's, it's very seamless for all the users, and that's the intent behind that. Plus, of course, the main thing is security that's built in. Great. And then just... Uh, a couple questions around installation setup. You know, mm -hmm. what is this? What is the installation like? What's the effort like to to get Go Anywhere set up? Yeah, the you know I mentioned you know how quick and simple it is to install. You, you know, either on prem or in our SaaS environment. You know, if you do it on prem, uh, it takes seriously less than 10 minutes to download it, install it, and have it up and running. At that point, you can set it up and configure it as needed and start set up the workflows. What, what makes it really simple is that we also include an embedded Derby database. So you don't need to worry about trying to externalize it right away or nothing like that. The embedded Derby database works great. It's a good starter database. You, know, you can actually run with it for quite a while, but it makes it really easy for you to try, test it out, and more. And all of this connections, all your software, by the way, and, and you know the downloading, the documentation, I pointed out the, the customer portal. You know, once you get registered, you can get in there and from that customer portal, take those options yourself, download it, install it, give it a spin, it's simple. But we'd be glad and more than willing to spend an hour or two even to work with you to make sure it's up and running and answering your questions. Perfect. Well, I know a few more questions have come in and we'll um, answer those through the chat just to make sure everybody is covered. Um, but otherwise, just wanted to reiterate that the slide we have pulled up has our contact information. So please do reach out if you have more questions or if we didn't cover things that you'd like to know about Go Anywhere. Like Heath mentioned, we do have that free 30-day trial. Um, it's full features. And you can also request a, a custom demo and time to discuss your requirements if you are interested. So again, thank you so much for joining. We will have a survey that will pop up after the webinar ends. So please do let us know what you think. And we're really glad you joined. Heath, thanks so much for walking us through everything. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks everyone.